So in this video, I'd like to prove that there are infinitely many primes. Now, the most famous proof of this theorem is the one due to Euclid in 300 BC. And for many people, it's one of the first real proofs that they encounter when they start to study mathematics. Euclid's proof uses a method called proof by contradiction. In other words, that means we assume that what we're trying to prove is false. And then once examining the consequences of that assumption, it leads to a contradiction, a logical absurdity. Now, the proof I want to show you today is quite different. It's a totally different proof and a remarkably elegant one. It's similar to Goldbach's proof, and the guy who came up with it is a guy called Philip Sidak, who I believe is a mathematician from Slovakia, and he's currently a professor of mathematics at the University of North Carolina. It doesn't use a proof by contradiction, and it goes a bit like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that n is a positive integer not equal to 1. So suppose that n, so suppose n greater than 1 is a positive integer. So in other words, we're taking n to be a positive whole number, which is not equal to 1. We're not including 1 in our definition of n. OK, now using this, I'm going to take two numbers, n and n plus 1. So let's take n and n plus 1. What do I want to do with these? Well, what do we notice? These two numbers are consecutive integers. And their highest common factor is 1. So in other words, these two numbers are co-prime. So these two numbers are co-prime, which means their highest common factor is 1. Why is that? Well, let's suppose we've got a number p, which divides n. And let's suppose also, so we're also supposing that p divides n plus 1. Now, if p divides n and p divides n plus 1, then p must also defi uh, divide the difference between these two numbers. So in other words, p must also divide n plus 1 minus n. That's the difference between these two numbers. But n plus 1 minus n is just 1, so that tells us that p divides 1. But the only positive integer which divides 1 is 1, so that must mean p is equal to 1. But if p equals 1, then that means the highest common factor of n and n plus 1 must be 1. And the way we write this, by the way, uh, is that the HCF, the highest common factor of n and n plus 1, is equal to 1. And sometimes you might also see this written as GCD, which stands for the greatest common divisor. So the greatest common divisor of n and n plus 1 is 1. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more space. I think that's enough. OK, so what am I going to do with the numbers n and n plus 1? Well, I'm going to define a sequence. I'm going to define it like this. So let's define the uh, first number in the sequence, a2. I'm just going to define a2 to be the product of those two numbers. So I'm going to let a2 be equal to n times n plus 1. So a2 is just the product of those two numbers above. So how many distinct prime factors does this product a2 actually have? Well, as we've just seen, n and n plus 1 don't share any prime factors. So what does that mean? If n and n plus 1 don't share any prime factors, then n has at least one prime factor. So n is going to contribute at least one prime factor. And n plus 1 is going to have another prime factor which is distinct from the prime factors of n. So this is also going to contribute at least one prime factor. So in total, a2 has at least two prime, two prime factors. So a2 has at least two distinct or different prime factors. OK, that's useful to know. So now I want to see if I can define a3. How am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a2 which is defined above as n times n plus 1, and I'm going to add 1 to it. So I'm going to take the numbers n times n plus 1, that's my first number, and the second number I'm going to consider is n times n plus 1 plus 1. So in other words, it's exactly the same number as before, plus 1. Now notice that these are also consecutive integers, so their highest common factor is also 1. If we now define a3, to be the product of these two numbers. So if I define a3 to be the first number, which is n times n plus 1, 
times the second number, which is n times n plus 1 plus 1, then how many distinct prime factors does a3 have? Well, we've just seen that n times n plus 1, which is the same as a2, that has at least two distinct prime factors. So n times n plus 1 is going to contribute at least two distinct prime factors. And just as before, since n times n plus 1 and n times n plus 1 plus 1 are consecutive numbers, then n times n plus 1 plus 1, that's the expression in the square brackets, has at least one prime factor which is distinct from the prime factors of n times n plus 1. So this expression in the square brackets contributes at least one distinct prime factor. So in total, a3 has at least three distinct prime factors. So where am I going with this? Now you can see that I can continue this process forever. If I define a4 in a similar way, so if I said that a4 was basically equal to this whole thing, so a3 times a3 plus 1, then you'll see, if I just give myself a little bit more space, that's not what I wanted to do, let's give myself some more space here, you'll see that I'll have at least three prime factors, distinct prime factors contributed from this first term, and at least one from this term. So in exactly the same way, a4 is going to have at least four distinct prime factors. And then if I defined a n, well, that will have at least n prime factors. But since I can keep building this sequence because there are infinitely many positive integers, I can keep doing this forever. But if I can keep, going, keep this process going forever, that means I can find an infinite number of prime factors, which means there must be infinitely many primes. And that's the end of Sidex proof. So that's all I wanted to show you today. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to support my content, then please consider pledging to my Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com forward slash crystal math, or you can find a link in the description box below. That's all from me. Thanks for watching.